you just got paid, but before you know it, it's all gone and you have no idea where it went, or you get your money in your checking account and you just leave it there, well then this is the ultimate video for you because we'll be going over step by step how to prioritize where to put your money because we all know school didn't teach us any of this. Hey, I'm Kevin and on this channel, we talk strategies to help you along on your financial journey. If that sounds good, leave a thumbs up on this video and let's hop right in. Now, before we start making changes, you gotta get organized. For most people, they get paid, the money goes into their checking account and that's it. They see the amount they have and they think of how to spend it without really thinking about the entire big picture. Especially if you're just starting out, you really wanna get in the habit of tracking where your money is going month to month, year to year, or even if you're saving at all. Maybe you spend too much on Starbucks and you should cut back and start making your own coffee instead. Or you're overpaying for your phone bill and you should negotiate or find a better phone plan or even you're paying for a subscription that you're not even using anymore. For me, I use a site called Personal Capital that aggregates all my accounts and gives me an easy one-page view of all my financials. If you're not comfortable using a third-party site, you could use budgeting spreadsheets instead. You could find these through searching on Google or places like the Personal Finance subreddit. Once you have a clear picture of all your finances, then that's a good baseline for you to build off of making changes and adjustments and being able to see month to month those changes taking effect. What you do from there really depends on what your goals are in life. Are you fine working comfortably and retiring at 65? Do you want to retire early and doing other things in your life? Do you want to live minimally or do you want to live a more luxurious lifestyle? Being organized with your finances is the number one thing you need to do no matter what your goals are because that gives you a foundation where you can project out three, four, five years from now to see if you're on track and make any adjustments um, as you need. Okay, so the first thing you want to do with your income happens even before you get paid and that's contributing to 401k retirement plans. Most employers have a program set up where they will match you for your 401k contributions up to a certain percentage. For example, for my employer, we get matched 50% of our contributions up to 7% of our total salary. That means that if I'm making 100k a year, I can contribute $7,000 of my income to this 401k and I'll get a free $3,500 added on by my employer as well. This is absolutely free money that no matter what, you should take. Nowhere else are you gonna find a guaranteed return on your money like this. Because this deduction happens before you even get paid, it's like you never even had this money in the first place, which is good because then you won't get used to having that money, but yet you're getting free money for a matching and you're saving for retirement in the long run. This alone can make you a millionaire even if you do nothing else. In our example, if you contribute $7,000 and your employer matches 50% of that, that's a total of about $10,500 or about $875 a month. If you do this over 30 years and with a compound interest rate of 8% year over year, which is pretty average, you'll be over a millionaire in 30 years. Now, next up, you need to live, right? So you'll definitely need to spend on your basic needs. These are things like having a roof above your head, food, utilities, transportation, and healthcare. But the key word here is basic needs, which doesn't account for all the things that you might want, like luxury goods. Even then, once you're organized and you're tracking everything you're spending on, you could probably make adjustments here to save even more. The biggest expense here is probably housing. And to cut down there, you could maybe move it to a cheaper area, find a roommate. If you have a mortgage and because the interest rates have been going down, maybe you want to refinance into a lower monthly payment. For food, Instead of shopping at places like Whole Foods, maybe consider your local grocery store like Trader Joe's instead. And if you're eating out a lot, maybe cut back on that and learn to cook more at home, which will save you a lot of money there. For utilities and stuff, you probably don't need a new iPhone every single year. And if you think you're paying too much for your phone bill, you can look elsewhere as well or get a cheaper phone plan. And lastly, consider if you really need a car or if you can just walk to work or take public transportation and take Uber or Lyft in the cases that you need to go far. Maybe in the long run, that'll actually save you money instead. And for healthcare, don't really skimp on this place. Make sure you go to your regular checkups, you stay healthy, and you have insurance in case things go wrong. Because in the United States, 
healthcare can be really expensive, so you don't want to need it and not have insurance. And that leads me to my next point, which is to have an emergency fund. This is a cushion of money you set aside where you can draw from whenever you need. That means not having this money invested in a stock market and instead having it in a high yield savings account instead. That's because the worst thing that can happen is the entire market goes down, bringing down your emergency fund with you and not having something to draw from when you really need it leading you to have to take on certain types of debt in order to pay any expenses that come up. Of course, we hope that we never have to use this amount of money, but just by having it will give you peace of mind that you'll handle anything that life throws at you. Just by having $1,000 in an emergency fund, you'll be doing better than over half of millennials, as 60% of millennials can't afford a $1,000 emergency. All right, next, you'll wanna pay off any high interest debt you have, probably anywhere upwards of four or 5%. The most common culprit here is credit card debt that could be costing you 20% every year. These are the kinds of debt you want to pay first because it's kind of like giving you a guaranteed 20% return on your money, which is something you'll never find anywhere else. Having this type of debt can also weigh you down mentally, and by getting rid of it, it's like lifting a big weight off of your shoulders. Now, the two most common ways to pay off debt is either the snowball method or the avalanche method. The snowball method is where you target the accounts with the smallest amount of debt first. That way you progress faster and pay off a lot of accounts, giving you more motivation to keep going. However, by leaving the big debt untouched and only driving down the smaller pieces of debt first, over the long run, you'll likely pay a lot more interest. On the other hand, you have the avalanche method, which is when you pay off the debt with the highest interest rate first. However, the highest interest rate debt is usually the biggest piece of debt and will take a while to pay down, which means you need a lot more self-discipline to keep you on track. But because you're targeting these highest interest rate debt first, it's objectively the most efficient way to pay down debt and minimizing the interest you're paying across the lifetime of you paying down the debt. A final note about debt is that notice I specified high interest debt. If you have low interest debt like mortgages in the 2 to 3% range, you could leave those and pay them off as slowly as possible because you'll likely make way more than 2 to 3%, maybe even up to like 8% a year elsewhere, which will give you enough to cover the interest rate and give you some profit as well. In fact, with 2%, that's in line with inflation. So that means that you're borrowing money for free essentially. Now, if you've been doing or will be doing all the steps we just mentioned, you're in a pretty decent financial situation. You're organized, you're saving for retirement, you're meeting your basic needs, you have an emergency fund, and you're handling your debt. Now, these next two things will really depend on the goals you have in life, whether you wanna spend on things you enjoy now, or you wanna wait a bit and you wanna keep building your finances and enjoy even more in the future. This really isn't an all or nothing, but more of a sliding scale where you can adjust based on your own goals. In either case, this is a step where you wanna spend on things that will bring you happiness or you find fun and that you enjoy. Maybe it's a hobby you have and you wanna buy a new snowboard, new tennis racket, invest in some collectibles, or you love to travel so you wanna budget for that big trip. Here's a good time to do all of that. I mean, you only have one life, so it's up to you to find the right balance of what you want to do. Lastly, your money should be going into savings and investments. This is where real wealth is built and what you need to do if you want to accelerate your finances. Remember, it's never too early to start. And even if you don't have a lot of money to invest with, you should still do it now because what you do have is time. And with time, you have a lot longer of a time frame for a compound interest, which will really work in your favor. Another thing is you should really invest in yourself and build up multiple streams of income. In fact, a study on self-made millionaires showed that almost a third of them had five or more streams of income. And that a few of these streams of income included investment, earned, rental, royalty, capital gains, profits, and interest income. Some other actionable things you can do if you want to invest in the market is to look into opening a Roth IRA, which is an account you can contribute to with about six or $7,000, depending on your age, and any growth and gains you have in that account are tax-free. If you want more information on Roth IRAs, check out my previous video dedicated to this. Another really popular way people build wealth is through real estate. Maybe you wanna do wholesaling where you find a undervalued property, 
put it under contract and then flip that contract to someone else for a small profit. Or you find fixer uppers where you fix up to increase your equity in the home and either flip it for a profit or you keep it and rent it out for cash flow. Or another thing is you can invest in a side hustle or business and continue working on that, which will one day build into another significant source of income. If you're just getting started with investing, I do have a video going over how and what you should be investing in, which I'll link above as well as below in the description. With all that said, let's recap what you need to do and how you should prioritize where to put your money. First is to keep organized. This is so you can get an overview of where everything is and how everything is going, as well as letting you detect any improvements you can make. You can then also project out years into the future to see where your situation will be then. Next, invest into your retirement accounts. This is especially true if your employer does any type of matching because that's essentially free money that you should always take. These contributions are also done before you get paid. So you never feel like you're losing anything. And if you can get used to the amount of pay you actually get in your checking account, you don't even notice this, but you're still building for retirement. Then third, spend on your basic needs like having a roof over your head, food, utilities, transportation, and healthcare. After that, fourth, build up an emergency fund in a high yield savings account. This will help you pay off any emergencies that come up or give you peace of mind that you have a cushion in case something does come up. Fifth pay off any high interest debt you own, six, spend some on your life and enjoy, and seven, save and invest in order to build wealth for your future. All in all, things won't change if you're afraid to look or you just ignore them. So put in the work and get everything in line. If you follow all of these steps, you'll have everything in line and be able to make the tweaks you need to reach the goals that you want for yourself. Personally, I like the option to fire or financial independence retired early, somewhere in my 40s. So having a big overview of all of my finances allows me to detect things I need to change and things I need to do in order to reach that goal. Like they say, if you fail to plan, you plan to fail. And that's definitely true for your finances. That said, if you're new to all of this and you want more details on how you can get started, check out my previous video on how to get started with investing. Or if you like spending a lot, check out my other video that goes deep into detail on how I'm able to get a discount on every single thing I spy. Thanks for watching and as always, invest safe and see you in the next one.